Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Azure Infrastructure Update. It's the 17th of May and a really quick update this week. As always, I have the chapters, so you can jump to the update you care about the most. New videos this week, so I dived into an overview of the various, primarily generative AI solutions Microsoft have. What is generative AI and large language models? What are the co-pilots? What is Copilot Studio? What are the various Azure AI Studio services and models there? And when would I use them? And what are some of the other capabilities to enhance the experience? So I just went through kind of a decision matrix of when you might use which and an overview of what they are. And then I explored the ephemeral OS disk capability, why you might use it and how it functions underneath. On to what's new on the compute side. So Ubuntu 24.04, Long-term servicing is now available for the Azure Virtual Machines. So that's the latest LTS release from Canonical. Azure Compute Reservation Exchanges has been extended. So Azure Reservations, hey, I commit to this one or three year term for many different types of service, including certain compute services like virtual machines, uh, dedicated host. And what we could do in the past is we could say, hey, I actually want to trade in the remaining amount of that reservation to create a new one for at least that amount for a new term. So originally, they were going to stop this ability to trade in for those compute specific reservations from the 1st of January 2024. That has now been extended. So there's no current end date for that. Now, we still obviously have Azure savings plans, which are a lot more flexible than the Azure reservations. The savings plan is like, hey, I'm going to spend this much on compute services, any region, any AZ, any of the included compute services, which have things like service plans and virtual machines and many other things. But its discount is not quite as good as the Azure reservation typically. So now, hey, that ability to trade it in has been extended. On the networking side, so App Gateway V2 Basic is now in preview. And if we go and look at what this is, primarily the, the SLA is different. So it's three nines instead of the 99.95. It has all of the core basic functionality, but it doesn't have any of the advanced functionality. So if you look at things like URL rewrite, mutual TLS, private link support, only private link, TLS, TCP proxy, doesn't have those. The scale is significantly lower, as is the capacity uh, you get with a capacity unit. But if I just want a very basic functionality, maybe a, a small, maybe even medium size deployment, uh, this may meet those requirements. So obviously a much more attractive price point. Then, hopefully if this works, come on. Uh, Azure front door now has server variable enhancements. So with Azure front door, I can modify uh, the request and the responses. For example, I could redirect a client to a different page. I could modify parameters within the HTTP header in that request and response. There are a number of server variables available that I can use with my rule sets to match on specific properties. For example, there's one for the URL path. So there's a server URL path variable. So I could make decisions based on the path portion of the URL they're accessing to maybe redirect it or rewrite it to different places. So there's a whole set of these and I just leverage them in my rule set inside the, the curly, the squiggly braces uh, to enhance how I'm doing my various types of routing. Express route seamless gateway migration is now GA. It's very common for customers to want to move from what was a non-AZ resilient gateway to an AZ resilient gateway, i.e. the different instances that make up my gateway service are distributed over the availability zones, which have that independent power cooling networking, i.e. my much better resiliency. In the past, I could only have one express route gateway in my gateway subnet, which means to do a migration, it would essentially have to delete and then recreate. So there was a fairly significant outage for my connectivity. What this new experience lets me do is add a second gateway, which would be the AZ resilient, 
and then migrate my connections over to the new gateway. So now I've got two express route gateways in the gateway subnet. There might still be a blip of connectivity because it's still having to move it, but it's much, much smaller than what we had in the past. Now, my gateway subnet has to be big enough to support two express route gateways. It's possible I'd have to go and add a second prefix to my gateway subnet if it's not already, for example, a slash 24, but I can now enable that far more seamless capability. Onto the database side. So the data API builder has gone GA. This is an open source project developed by Microsoft, and it's basically a Docker container image. And what it's going to do is it's going to abstract away your specific backend database to provide a REST API and a GraphQL interface to whatever application wants to talk to your database. So it's abstracting away the specifics of the database and it's gonna support, well, it does support Postgres, MySQL, obviously Microsoft SQL Server, uh, Cosmos DB. And all I have to do is I run this Docker image in a container. Now I can run multiple of them for resiliency purposes. I tell it which database it wants to connect to and it will automatically generate the schema for that database and expose it now as a REST API via GraphQL so my applications can just talk to that. When we architect applications, we like doing layers. I don't want my client app talking directly to a specific database implementation because then there's very tight binding. So we have layers in, for example, maybe a, a middle tier layer. So what this is gonna enable me to do is remove a whole chunk of code I would previously have to write to provide that layer between my functionality and the specific database implementation. So it's just gonna expose that REST API or GraphQL, whatever I want to use, then I would go and talk to that container, which is then going and talking to the database. And because it's a container, hey, I can run it on-prem, I can run it in Azure container solutions, like Azure Kubernetes services, Azure container instances, Azure container apps, uh, very, very simple. And again, I can run multiple instances for resiliency uh, and scale. And then miscellaneous, so on the open AI sets of services available in Azure AI. So GPT-4 Turbo with vision model has gone GA. So this is the new version of GPT-4, which now just has the vision natively to the model. So processing of both text and images, it replaces a bunch of the older ones. But probably more exciting is we have the GPT-4 O. O is for Omni. This is available in a limited number of regions. I think it's two US regions right now. And you've probably seen the demo. And the huge thing here is it's text, it's images, it's video, it's audio, it's near real time, or it really is real time. The latency between its responses is the same as a human latency. So we can have these interactive conversations and it has this single vector space model now that supports all of those multi-modalities, text, images, video, audio. It's not that it's got different models for text and images and video. It's one vector space that handles all of those modalities. And so it's amazing what it can do. And if you've seen the demos, it's just like you're interacting with a human being. It really is kind of that true personal assistant type sets of capability. For English, it has a similar performance for English language and for code. For non-English, it's actually got a pretty huge performance improvement. And go and look at the demos of this thing. It's kind of you're looking at the future there. And then Azure Site Recovery now supports uh, Trusted Launch Virtual Machines. Remember Trusted Launch, the Gen 2 VMs. They have the TPMs, they have Secure Boot, the attestation of the secure boot process from the hardware all the way through to the OS. So now I can protect those with Azure Site Recovery. And that was it. Uh, as always, I hope this was useful. Till next video, take care.